presentation about our main guest today, that is Mr. Blatt. Uh, then we'll ask him to, to talk a little bit about his experiences. Then another person, that is another guest, that is Mr. Uh, Mr. Heath. Um, and then we'll have workshops in the classroom. Later I'll tell you to which, to which room you'll go, right? And then, after the workshops, we are going to meet here again. But I'll tell you what time later, okay? So now, let's start with a presentation, okay? I live, it was my destiny and my luck. I've knocked a various door. My friends slammed their door into my face. But a foreign paw gave me some bread with butter, and she didn't accept the ring in return. Sometimes, I think how I would have behaved. Thomas Toivy Blatt. Thomas Blatt was born in Izbica, 1927, in a Polish state, a small town, which was called the capital of Jews, because the majority of the community was Jewish. In 1939, the town was 90% populated by Jews. Life in Izbica was immensely difficult due to employment and poverty, but Thomas Blatt described this place as his own world, his happiness, his beauty, his Eden. The Arcadia was over when the Germans walked into the city. During the spring in 1933, along with his family, Thomas Blatt was taken to extermination camp in Sobibor. His parents and his younger brother were killed in a gas chamber. He himself survived in a camp workshop. He managed to survive only because of the uprising. It was on the 13th of October, 1933. About 300 people escaped from Sobibor then, from which only few managed to survive until the end of the war. It is estimated that only one out of 10 prisoners managed to escape to freedom. Thomas Blatt is currently one of the last living insurgents of Sobibur camp. When the war was over, Toivi emigrated to the USA, where he raised his own family, arranged his job, and in spare moments, gathered notes to help him about his purgatory in Sobibur. His memorials first appeared in a Polish magazine, Świat i Kulisy. In 1979, Vlad met with one of the leaders of Sobibor Uprising, Alexander Shasa, Sasha aronowski paczerski It was a very significant meeting for him to be able to shake his hands with him and get an opportunity to thank him for saving his life. In 1983, he was granted a permission to have a three-hour interview with a former SS officer from Sobibur, Karl Frenzel. 
The recording of the interview, entitled A Confrontation with a Murderer, was posted on the 28th of March 1984 in a German weekly magazine, Stern. The same interview was published by Polish weekly magazine Przegląd Tygodniowy and Israeli weekly Haaretz. From the ashes of Sobibor, it is a fascinating reading, revealing the childhood of a Jewish boy living in eastern Poland in a small town, Izbica. After that, we read about war, Sobibor, and the author's extremely hard moments after escaping from the death camp. The CBS station was interested in the history of Sobibur, presented by Mr. Blood. They created a film, Escape from Sobibur, on the base of his book. The film was awarded two Golden Globes and was nominated for Gemmy Awards. At present, Mr. Blood presents part of the film during his lectures about the Holocaust to portray his Sobibur experiences. Mr. Thomas Blood, after retirement, spends all his spare time gathering knowledge about the Holocaust. It is his life objective. He has the awareness of the short time he is left. However, he is not discouraged by this. Full of energy and optimism, he walks into the airplane and flies wherever he is invited to. Thomas Toivy Blatt is a friend with teenager from the 8th high school in Lublin. Every year he steps into the school to talk about his experience, telling young people about his history, making them more sensitive and provokes thoughts. Every time he visits Lublin, Thomas Blatt spends almost every day in Majdanek, where he meets with the visitors of the Museum of Martyrdom, telling stories based on his own experience about people who stayed in this place until the end of time. In Wierzchowis Kapeles, during the meeting with Czoczek family and their friends, Thomas Blatt talks about his dramatic experiences. Thomas Blatt at the audience with the Pope, John Paul II. Mr. Blatt is being interviewed by a journalist from Kuria Lubelski and also journalist Alan Heath, accompanies him during his lecture in Yeshiva in Lublin. Thank you. I, uh, my name, of course, is uh, Tuvia Blatt. Um, I didn't expect such a film, documentary film. Uh, I feel very humble. Uh, um, today is the day when, the, when I escaped from Solibor. About uh, this time, which is about nine o'clock, I think, I was uh, I remember standing close to. I was standing with two friends, and uh, we were discussing what will be, what will, what will be uh, our future, what will happen in a few uh, in a few hours, because the revolt was set for five o'clock. I, I wonder, I, I, I'm talking because this is, this is my payback that I survived. I was talking many places in, in uh, Russia, in Germany, in uh, Korea, Japan. I feel when I tell people uh, about the past, with the Holocaust, I feel like I am doing something, something good. And when I see here in this school, uh, people from Israel coming, being here as guests, and uh, I really uh, am very happy to see it. I escaped, and it wasn't so easy. Uh, people ask me, so what happened after you escape? After I escape, was in the end, because when, when I, the first minute when I escaped from the camp to the forest, I was up. I didn't care what's up, what will happen next. The, the, the feeling of freedom in the forest was overwhelmed, overwhelming. But later, you were hungry. You, must, you need to eat. If I would be a Christian boy, 
Und ich sage, Christian, wo würden die noch dort kämpfen? I would uh, simple if I would escape, it would happen so. Uh, I could go to any place, to any city, to any village and mix with the people, and I'm a free man. But I was a Jewish boy, where should I go? Which door should I, on which door should I knock uh, to, uh, to make for a piece of bread? Could be able to open uh, the door to a friendly person who will give me food and even allow me to sleep over. And could be, uh, they will open the door and they will just grab me and deliver to the Germans. So everything could happen. So I suffered, another was hiding in the forest. In the uh, friend of people, Polish people, Christians would give me uh, food. Uh, and uh, until I met a Polish farmer who did agree to help us with their two boys, three boys. Uh, we should agree that come guys, sleep in my place, I will, I will, I will hide you and, and, uh, until the end of the war. And uh, he, did take, he made a little place in his barn and uh, after a while he did come to help us and shot at us. I still have the bullet under the chin here and I pretended to be dead. And, uh, and I escaped, and I survived. Again, people ask me, even Germans, when I talk, do you must hate us. You, must, you, 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 you hate the farmer, probably. You hate the Polish people, the German people, other people. No, it's not true. I think you can forget the Nazi uh, crimes. I am, from, I am from memory, so it should not happen again, but we should not hate. It's a new generation, we are not guilty, but we should learn from the past. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much.